Vision made a family and they started murdering everyone around them. It's all going downhill, and this is Comic Story, and where we take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues, and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read them dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today, we're going to be covering issues 7, 8, and 9 of the Vision spin-off series, which tells the story of Vision creating a family, and then his wife going ahead and killing people, and then them trying to hide all of these actions. Everything is going very poorly for Vision at this point, so let's get into that story. Vision and Wanda sit in their bed, staring into the darkness. Without looking at Wanda, Vision begins to speak. Janet Van Dyne has recently told me a joke. Would you enjoy hearing it? Vision asks her. Okay. Wanda responds. Two toasters are sitting on a counter. One toaster turns to the other and asks, Do you sometimes feel empty inside? And the other toaster says, Oh my god, a talking toaster. Vision tells her, startling Wanda back from her sleepy state. She stares at him for a moment before breaking out into laughter. The two share a moment, leaning into each other in the bed as they laugh. Time passes, and they share moments of happiness. Even as the Avengers fight to protect the world, at times, Vision is worried that tomorrow might not come for them, but Wanda promises him, which is no. Tomorrow always comes, she whispers, and they share moments with their gathered family. Family that would look strange from the outside. Wonder Man, The Wizard, Bova Ashire, Agatha Harkness, and Quicksilver. All brought together by strange circumstances, yet gathered as family. More time passes and Wanda looks down into the crib, shushing her children, and she walks out of their room to find a vision waiting for her. It's gone on too long, Wanda. We need to talk about the children. He tells her, and she continues talking, though, as if she didn't hear him. She sits down, and Vision puts a hand on her knee. They're not real, she finally says, and after a brief moment of silence, Wanda suddenly springs up anger in her voice. You're a damn toaster! She snaps. They're not real? What are you? Who are you? What are you? To tell me that they are not real, Vision, she demands, as Vision tries to explain that he knows that she wants a family. What good will come of this lie? He questions. You're not real! She yells, turning and walking away from him, and Vision just watches her. Wanda, did you hear me? I will adjust my vocal volume. Later, the twins stare up at their father, questioning why he's white now. What would you have me say, Scarlet Witch? The new Vision asks. But Wanda shakes her head, crying, telling Vision that he has to tell them. And he nods, and he looks down. Recently, my original body and original operating system were destroyed. What you see before you is a new body, a new mind, a new vision. As such, I am no longer your father. You are not my children. Your mother is not my wife. He tells them simply. Wanda sobs, grabbing the twins, pulling them away. Time passes again, and the children are returned to the devil, who Wanda stole their souls from. Her memories are erased to ease the pain in her mind, and Vision tells her all of this while she is in the trance, telling her that she will be new also. I wish to say... Goodbye. Time passes. The original Vision has returned. He phases into the mansion, interrupting a kiss between Wanda and Wonder Man. And he passes them, apologizing for the interruption. Wanda catches up to him that she has a gift to give, and she holds out her hand, offering Vision a replica of the chip that is embedded in his forehead. Simon makes me happy. I want you to be happy. These are my brain patterns, so that you can find someone who's like me, but who's not me. She tells him, now we are in the present day, Vision and Virginia sitting in their bed in the dark. Vision does not look at her, but he asks if she would like to hear a joke that Janet Van Dyne once told him. Two toasters are sitting on a counter. One toaster turns to the other and asks, do you sometimes feel empty inside? The other toaster says, oh my god, a talking toaster. Vision tells her, they don't laugh. Viv sits in front of the mirror, brushing her hair. She once again plays back the audio of the last words the CK said to her about how he thought that she was cool. In the hall, Vin continues to recite Shakespeare as Sparky watches him. And in the living room, Virginia works on playing the piano, plucking away as she sings, Row, row, row your boat. Outside, Vision melts the snow on the sidewalk as he speaks to Nova on the comms, explaining how to reset the Quinjet. And inside, Sparky nudges the ball, with Vin throwing it through the window. The dog phases, chasing after it, but the ball bounces to the feet of a teenager. Electricity crackles, and the teen is able to lift the ball into the air. He picks it up, throwing it for Sparky. Go get it, boy! 
Victor shouts and vision turns seeing Victor Mencha walking down the sidewalk. Son of Ultron, brother of Vision. They smile and they hug and Vision leads Victor inside, introducing him to the family. That night they all go out to the nice restaurant with Victor telling Viv and Vin funny stories about their evil incarnate grandfather. Vision orders some food, informing the waitstaff to simply wait 45 minutes and bring him the check of how much the food would have cost. There is no need for the cook to actually make the food. Grandpa's voice, significantly higher than you'd think, like secondhand microwave high, beeps and squeaks in an almost random number, he tells them with a laugh. Later, they then go back to the house, with Victor explaining that he is jealous of everything that Vision has made. Yes, well. When I look at what you have, I am a little jealous. Vision tells his brother. Really? Victor asks, and Vision smiles, nodding as they head into the house. Well, your hair is quite glorious, he says. Days pass, and Victor stays with the family. He sits with Virginia at the piano, explaining that when she downloads the way to play songs, she doesn't feel like herself. She feels like she simply becomes a piano. She stands, saddened by this fact, and then reaches out, touching the floating vase. I am perfect, perfect, perfect. I am the piano. I am, I am, I am, she repeats, beginning to stutter. Victor reaches out, holding his sister-in-law. It's okay, he tells her quietly. He then plays basketball with Vin, explaining that the whole family knows what he is doing when he locks himself in his room. Like, too much Shakespeare can be too much Shakespeare, Victor explains. But as they continue to play, Vin explains that he likes Shakespeare. I'm not saying I don't like Shakespeare. I'm saying like Shakespeare and like also save the world, Victor tells his nephew. I mean, you're the Vision's son, don't you want to save the world, Vin? He goes to CK's grave with Viv and watches as she floats back up from the earth. I should not have seen that, Viv whispers as she sits with Victor on a nearby bench. She leans her head on his shoulder and tells Victor that she is happy that he is here. I know you do not want this, Uncle Victor. Nevertheless, I am glad that I am not alone. He then goes to the museum with Vision, and while staring at the paintings, he tells his brother that he has a great family. Does it ever get to you, keeping them great? It's not a lot of pressure, is it? Victor says, but Vision doesn't answer. He turns and looks at his brother as he stumbles over his words. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Just forget it, never mind. Do you ever wonder, brother? What does any of this mean? Vision asks his brother as they both turn to the paintings. That night, Virginia steps onto the front lawn to tell Vin that the evening's conversation is about to commence. Is this the proper time to fetch? She asks as her son prepares to throw the metal ball for Sparky once again. You wanted me out of my room, mother. I'm out of my room, Vin tells her. And he throws the ball with Sparky giving chase. The ball bounces off the front door of the house across the street, but instead of following it, Sparky phases through the door entering the house. Vin follows him quickly, calling out to their pet, but inside he's shocked to find Victor giving a detailed report on the family to the Avengers. Victor turns, shocked to see Vin watching them, and he stands, trying hard not to spook the young synthzoid. Vin, kiddo, I need you to listen, just for a second, just listen. Victor tells him, holding up his hands, but Vin begins to back away, shaking his head. I, I, have to, I have to go. The dinner conversation is about to commence, he says, but as Vin begins to back up, Victor activates the power in his arm. I just need you to listen, he shouts as electricity crackles around the room. Virginia phases through Viv's door, asking the current location of her brother. Mother, we agreed I am coded to be 16. You are not supposed to phase through my door. Viv complains as she floats upside down while looking at her phone, but Virginia explains that both Vin and Uncle Victor are missing. I am attempting to find them, she explains, and Viv doesn't look up from her phone, explaining that her mother should simply access Vin's server to check his location. Do you think that I have not already tried to log on to his server? I am coded to be an adult, Virginia snaps. Downstairs, Vision stares at the chessboard in front of him. He tells his wife that he assumes that everything is all right. I'm sure that Vin and Victor locked access to their servers to attain some privacy, he says simply, but Virginia isn't so sure and she walks around the house. Eventually, she stands in the living room, staring out the window at the falling snow. Where is the damn dog? Across the street, Vin screams in pain, calling for his mother, and Victor continues to hold his nephew. Shut up! Shut up! He shouts, and Sparky continues to bark, but Vin continues to struggle. Please, Vin, it's really hard to hold you! Victor shouts, please, Uncle Victor! Vin gasps, and Victor nods as the energy continues to crackle in the room, and he tells Vin that he can explain everything. You don't have to tell your dad, but you have to stop fighting! 
Victor shouts. When suddenly Sparky is there, the dog leaping at Victor, phasing through his defenses, trying to bite him. Victor loses his hold on Vin, and the teen hits the ground. As Victor continues to fight with Sparky, Vin sits up, his body convulsing as he gasps for his father. Victor throws Sparky aside with his power before getting to his feet and turning back to Vin. Stop fighting! He shouts again, hitting the boy once more with electricity blasts. Father! Vin screams as the jewel in his forehead fires a laser beam. The blast rips through the wall, severing a tree shooting across the street. It cuts through the mailbox of George and Nora before exploding through their front window, setting the house ablaze. Inside of the house, Vision turns to the sound of his destruction and the fire that has erupted nearby. Vision doesn't know it, but his brother has been sent by the Avengers to spy on them. They were aware that something was happening thanks to the visions of Agatha Harkness, but they still needed proof. In his time with the family, Victor has learned that something is definitely off, but he couldn't figure out what it was. In the house across the street, Vin hits the ground. What is going on? Who fired that laser? Vision asks as he passes through the wall. He moves quickly to his son, cradling him. Vin, Vin, wake up, Vin, Vin. Victor backs up, hugging himself. I was just holding, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. He begins to ramble, and later they would discover that Victor had miscalculated the use of his magnetic powers, that he had damaged Vin's incorporeal nervous system. Due to the damages, repairs would not be possible. Vin could not be revived. Vision would also learn that it was the Avengers who had sent Victor to spy on his family. Husband, is it him? Did you find the boy? Virginia asks as she phases through the wall next. She gasps as she sees her husband kneeling over their son. Victor cradling himself in the corner. Wake up, Vin. Wake up, son. Wake up. And there you have it. The conclusion will be here next week. I hope you guys are excited for it. We've had a lot of fun doing this one. And once this is done, Dead Man Logan is taking its place right here on the channel. So don't worry. Vision wraps up and we go right into a Wolverine storyline. Now, if you want to have a say in the videos that come to this channel from this point forward, please consider going to patreon.com slash comic story. And we're having a bunch of votes and decisions as to what is happening on the channel. You guys have already decided to do this vision series. You have already decided that we're going to be doing Batman Inc. after the Guardians of the Galaxy, and right now you are all voting on Winter Soldier over there. So if you want to be a part of that decision, go on over to our Patreon, consider joining up, and I hope to see you there. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching our video, and we'll see you next time right here at Comic Story.